little over a week ago, I made a video about a show called Sinritsu Kaiki World Kawasugi. Could also be Sinritsu Kaiki Bile Kawasugi, but either way, it's about a couple of paranormal investigators in Japan that go on fictional adventures to find cultural artifacts that end up turning into this like much larger narrative and I absolutely loved this series, episode six, the most terrifying movie in history, and I called it the greatest thing I'd ever seen. And a lot of people loved this video. A lot of people came out, and uh, I also saw people like online all over the place watching this for the first time, giving these like genuinely honest reactions about how they felt about the creativity of the show, which made me very, very happy, warmed my heart. So I decided that it would make the most sense, I think, to probably just go through each and every one of these individual films and tell you about them, and then we can all enjoy them together, including the new stuff. There are 10 videos in this like show. They're all about feature length or they are features. It's hard to say. I thought it would be a great idea to come on and just start talking about Sinritsu Kaiki File Kawasugi Episode 1 and just see where that takes us. It is a wild show and if you've never heard of it before, a strap in. You're going to get some wild stuff. Not only later but also in this episode itself. Every single one of these is a self-contained kind of amount amalgamation of wild ideas all strung together in very exciting creative ways. You know, admittedly, as the kind of person who I write stories myself, I absolutely love this series. Now, the show is helmed by director Koji Shiraishi, who directed Neroi the Curse, uh, and amongst other things, like a cult. He's kind of a cult filmmaker in the found footage horror genre in Japan. He's pretty much widely known for making some of the coolest ones, largely because he's very interested in mystery, and he's very interested in developing on his plot points in really eccentric, uh, long-winded ways, and doing things that are generally ridiculous but in a way that is really really satisfying riding the line between comedy and horror a lot of times he even appears as an actor as the cameraman in Sinritsu Kaiki File Kawasugi very exciting to see him in a role and there's of course I mentioned this in the prior video there is an episode uh, 7 later on where he is seen with his like shelf of DVDs and one of them is the Twin Peaks box set which I think says a lot about his vision for what he wants this show to be <laughs> So today we're going to be looking at episode one, The Search for the Slit Mouth Woman, I believe is what it's called, uh, which is uh, just essentially Kuchisake Ona, which is the slit mouth woman in Japanese culture, and how two paranormal investigators, with the help of the cameraman played by the director of the series, go try to find her and catch her. <laughs> Emphasis on catch her. The two paranormal investigators, Ishikawa and Jin Kudo, are tasked to go catch her physically, even though she is supposedly a ghost. So Jin Kudo, of course, as we talked about in the prior episode, but for those uninitiated, is a violent, wild uh, maniac of a person. <laughs> who will just bring a bat and beat up whatever threat is happening in any environment. His plan to catch the slit mouth woman is to take a bat, hit her on the head, and throw her in the back of their 
production van. So some things about this show that you may know or may not know is that it kind of like uses cultural lore and urban legends, but it uses them as like a jumping off point to create its own lore, which is kind of something that Neroy does as well. Like it's something that Sri Raishi likes to play with. In this show, he really, really leans into this. The show is very much like the X-Files. It has like this almost distinct referential flair. Two investigators, they go looking for certain things. Um, one of them has a tragic past. You know, Ishikawa's very by the book. Jin Kudo, you know, wants to believe. But Jin Kudo is also a lot different than Fox Mulder in that Jin Kudo really just wants to sell DVDs. Yeah, this is something I did not mention in the part 6 video, but uh, it, it will become very important as the show goes on that Jin Kudo has one goal, and that is to sell DVDs. He wants to make a big buck doing a ghost show. So he's like Fox Mulder if you mix him with Zach Bagans and you mix him with like a Yakuza, like a comical over the top caricature of a Yakuza. He goes into any situation looking to do violence to whatever the supernatural deity is. <laughs> and he does not care about the humans that he's around. When I was watching episode one, I was looking through the comment section on the YouTube page where it was playing, and somebody said, oh my god, I thought this was just a ghost show. I didn't know that there would be, like, horrific violence and abuse in it. Yeah, man, that's what we're here for. The man is very entertaining. He's what you call an interesting character. It's a very unassuming show. You, you don't expect at the beginning that it's going to turn into what it turns into. So the first episode is more or less kind of straightforward, even though it does some like wacky things. It is nowhere near as wacky as it gets in like episode six, but the buildup is very important. I stressed in my video that it would be totally fine if you just skip straight to episode six and watch from there. I kind of retract this statement a little bit because I think that it's almost more fun in like its proper context because the buildup is wild. As I have been watching these, I've been seeing things and being like, oh, that's that. So it ends up mattering an awful lot later. So just remember that there's a grand narrative and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the lore of that, how we get there. <laughs> 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 the uh, search for the slip mount woman. So Jin Kudo and Ishikawa get a video from a, uh, a couple of guys who see Kuchisake Ona on the street and she chases them. <laughs> She chases them down an alleyway and then teleports down another alleyway and chases them that way. What they've encountered was something supernatural and they call in Ishikawa and Jin Kudo. So the two investigators try uh, recreating the video by going to the same place and like just generally getting a lay of the land. There's too complicated of web of streets for someone to like physically run around and like teleport into that general area. They just essentially decide that it has to be paranormal because there's no way that someone could literally do this. Gizmo, are you okay? Don't worry about it. So then they start trying to look for Kuchisake Ona just 
as a person to see if anyone has seen her around. They get a description of her and they go to a local homeless camp, find one homeless person that is willing to talk to them. They ask him about whether or not they'd like ever seen her in this camp turns out they have and not only that but she's been cutting off her hair and giving it to people as like these weird uh symbol like occult ritual objects of course the only way that jen kudo can get this homeless person to talk to them about this is by mercilessly beating the shit out of him so there is a long-winded sequence where he convinces the homeless person to talk to them the series just starts right off with Jin Kudo just violently abusing a homeless person. They learn about this specific charm that the guy has tied around his hand, which if this charm is still attached to him, then he won't get killed. And there have been homeless people who have died in relationship to Kuchisake Ona. Giz Gizmo, what are you barking at, buddy? What do you see out there? I don't see anything, buddy. Anyway, Gizmo, lay down, buddy. I don't see anything. So they decide that in order to investigate this a little bit further, they take pictures of the charm and they take it to an occultist, ask this person like what the origins are and, and what exactly the thing is. And they hear that it gizmo. <laughs> So the occultist tells them that object in question could only be used for black magic and they give a specific like occult sect that would make such a charm. So they decide that they need to go visit this like occult group and learn of the origins of Kuchisaka Ona. So upon visiting this particular occult sect of witchcraft, they speak to a woman who tells them a family lineage, how she had a baby with a guy but she didn't get to keep the baby or she's been looking for the baby she uh maybe was the baby aborted so it's implied that something uh bad has happened to this baby her and this guy never really uh stayed together like something ended up happening there weird family relations but either way the occultist that they're speaking to has this like huge seizure like possession event they see a ghost uh the woman vomits and they leave feeling like they maybe learned something but they're no closer to actually catching her because she's very elusive. Later on that homeless man that they spoke to who had the charm gets hit by a car right in front of them and then they steal the charm off of his dead body and walk away from him which is great. Jin Kudo decides that he really just needs to focus on catching her. It doesn't matter who she is he just wants to focus on catching her to sell DVDs. So he recruits the two guys who saw her in the video and decides to try to lure her to their apartment to knock on the door where Jin Kudo will then jump out of a van and beat her with a bat and put her in the back of the van. So they set up this sting operation with a bunch of cameras and they intend to stay there until they see her and they catch her. It takes a while but eventually they do see a, a woman matching the description walk down the alleyway and stop at their apartment door and begin knocking. Now this is like one of the a uh, classic scarier moments in the series. Kind of what you look for. It's the thing that like borders on comedy and scary. Like it tries to do both genuinely. A scary anonymous woman that they don't really know that much about standing at someone's door knocking but just standing there.
It's just a classic scary thing. If somebody was like knocking on my door right now, I would be terrified. I would hate to see that. Scary woman at night knocking on your door. You don't want to see that. But anyway, the two guys like decide to pretend to be Kuchisaka Ona's like old lover at the door talking to her, asking her about where the baby is. And it keeps her standing there for a long enough time for Jen Kudo to kind of figure out what his plan is going to be. He's trying to get them to stall, but eventually she just starts like doing all kinds of mystical, magical things to them. Jin Kudo tries to hit her with his car. <laughs> and then she runs off down the street. So Jin Kudo takes his bat and goes running off into the street to try to find her. And he fails to find her anywhere. He rages out about this because he really wanted to catch her for his show so he could sell DVDs. Either either way, none. Of, this is all here nor there because uh, the following day they go back to that apartment and there is just a circle of these hair charms laying in in the apartment and on the way out the camera catches the face of a very scary ghost hiding in the corner and the camera zooms in on that we see it and then boom it's over now it's important to note that when I was dipping my toe into like what this series would ultimately be I started with this episode and then went to the like supposed uh important one uh but i started here and i was like immediately sold on this i was like this is awesome i love this like it's everything that i like it's like what if scary paranormal thing but real what if conspiracy about scary paranormal thing ghost investigators but turned up to 11 what if they were really intense and extreme and all the creativity hallmarks were just right there and I knew that it would be something that I would just love but admittedly I skipped here and went straight to the most terrifying movie in history and I missed quite a bit in getting there and of course I told everybody to watch it without context and seemingly a lot of people watched it without context but there were quite a few people who watched the entire show have discovered what I have discovered now which is that it's a whole arcing story with a whole lot of like big highs and remarkable things. One hallmark about this show is that every episode contains at least one like iconic image. Kuchisake Ona standing at the door in the dark. Iconic. Them leaving and there's that like ghost face there. Iconic. Incredible. And the same is true for the next episodes as well. So overall, I love this show. I love this show a whole lot and I'm very excited to be watching all of it and, and like sharing this with the world. And if, if these videos make like at least one person go watch it, which is free on YouTube, that would make me just just a happy clam, I tell you what. Next video, I'm going to be talking about the second episode and we're just going to keep on going from there. This is like a nice little thing to be doing over October, I feel like. It's very fun. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please leave a comment uh, if you have something to say. And consider subscribing, supporting me on Patreon. You know, all the all the things that, that one does. And uh, I'll be back with episode two very soon. Also, I want wanted to let y'all know that my books, Fluids and Girl Flush, are now currently available. You can pick up both books with this new printing in the description at my Bandcamp store. For a discount, it's cheaper than it is anywhere else online if you're trying to find it. I'm currently trying to get it into more bookstores. We've been working on that a little bit lately. This month is going to be full of really cool stuff, a lot of news. Stay tuned. Keep an eye out for that. And uh, I will be seeing you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.